In this video, we'll look at the uh, vectors which span these three particular vectors here, a1, a2, and a3. We want to describe which vectors are in their uh, span. So in other words, we should take a generic vector b and ask, uh, is it in the span of a1, a2, and a3, and try to determine any conditions that would be met by the components of this vector b, which I've called b1, b2, and b3. So uh, the question is, b a linear combination of these three vectors? One way to answer that is to let A be the matrix whose columns are formed by the vectors that we're thinking about uh, forming the span of, the linear combinations of. And I'm going to let X be the vector who's um, uh, going to represent the weights of those column vectors. So we'll call those X1, X2, and X3. And the question now becomes, is the matrix equation AX equal to be a consistent equation if you hand me a vector b, is there a vector x that will make this uh, equation true? Remember on the left-hand side here, ax, that matrix multiplication, means to take the linear combinations of the columns of A, and the x's will represent the weights. So in practice, this means to look at the augmented matrix now. I've taken A here for the first three columns, and then I've put B on the right side, for the last column. So this is the augmented matrix. And we do row operations to uh, reduce it to its uh, reduced row echelon form. And when you do that, which we'll skip in this video, uh, you arrive at the following form. Notice that we have uh, ones right down the diagonals and then the left side or the right side here is telling us exactly what each variable will have to equal to make this system consistent. And in fact, it's consistent for every uh, choice of V. There's, there's no conditions placed on those uh, three variables, B1, B2, and B3 at all. We can um, see that there's three pivots. There's a pivot uh, position in each of the columns of A here. And that tells us that X1 and X2 and X3 have to have these values that appear on the right side. Remember, those values of X are telling you how to determine the weights of the linear combination that will be required to form your vector b. So for uh, one way of uh, interpreting this is to think about b is equal to a times those weights there. So this is the x vector. Remember b is equal to a times x. And I've put in what we've discovered x has to be in terms of the, the components of the b vector. So if you tell me b, I can write it as a linear combination using these formulas. Explicitly, the first weight will, uh, of A1 will be given by the first value of x. There's the second weight, B2, of A2. And then the third equation tells me the weight of A3. So as an example, just to illustrate uh, this property, if I take the basic vector i, whose components are 1, 0, and 0, is this a linear combination of the three vectors a1, a2, and a3? The answer is, of course, yes, because the system was uh, consistent regardless of what our b was. So let's figure out which linear combination it is. In other words, what are the weights that go with this particular vector? In this case, our vector b is i, and so b1 is 1, and the other two components are 0. So we use our formulas here uh, above for x1, x2, and x3 for the weights, and we plug in those values of b, and you get 2, 0, and minus 1. This means that the vector i is 2, that weight, times the first column vector, 0, the second weight, times the second column vector, and then minus 1 times the third column vector. And you can readily check just by doing the uh, calculation across the rows now to see that it really does come out to 1, 0, and 0 again, what we wanted it to be. So in fact, i is a linear combination of the three column vectors. It's this particular uh, linear combination using the weights from the formulas. So here's our conclusion. Every vector b is a linear combination of a1, a2, and a3. One way to say that very concisely is the span of those three vectors is equal to all of R3. Every uh, vector in R3 can be realized as a linear combination of those three.